Hey there stampers, welcome to another Step It Up video. Today we're going to be doing um, a collage type card. I did one of these a couple weeks ago. I think it was a Mojo Monday sketch. But um, I turned the step three, that was the Mojo card, and then um, I brought it down a couple of steps. So this is step one, kind of a simple card, but you can see the little collage effect. The first time I saw this stamp set, which is artistic etchings. I knew what I wanted to um, do with it. And um, I, I did add, you know how we love certain stamp sets and we can't get rid of even when they retire. Um, this is carte postale and I used two stamps from this set, uh, the fleur de lis and the bonjour. I thought that was so cute and perfect. Um, anyway, so this is step one, pretty simple but it, just a nice thinking of you card. Step two, I didn't do much except add a different piece of paper here. And then step three is actually several sheet strips of paper that have been punched. And the only other thing that I did differently was add brads. So not too terribly difficult. And I'm gonna go through it and show you each step. And we're gonna start with step one. Um, I start with the standard eight and a half by five and a half card base folded at four and a quarter to make the four and a quarter by five and a half card base. On step one, I used this. This is um, all the printed paper is from Love Letters. Some of it is from newsprint, I think. I think just the musical strip, or it could be from Love Letters. I should check, but. I will check and then I'll put it on, on the uh, video in text. Most of the paper is from Love Letters and I matted it in black. You'd hear it down and put it on your card base. I'm using, this ribbon is retired, but you can use anything that you can find. I really like this thick um, 7 8 width uh, sheer ribbon. And I just adhered that down, put it on before I put it to the card base to make and so that's the base for for one and the um, actual stamped image is going to be the same for all three of them the only thing I do differently is on um, the last one I had three little brads but everything else is exactly the same so let's go ahead and get started stamping for this technique um, this is also from the artistic etchings I used um, Riding Hood Red and cherry cobbler only because when doing a collage look you want it sort of distressed and old looking and so I just sort of make stripes on here there's no th the other thing I love about doing collage is if you make a mistake it's not a mistake it's just going to add to the charm so really anybody at any level of stamping can do this um, and I just go over it with Cherry Cobbler. And for this first part, um, since the base has this same image in it, I'm trying to, um, on the third one, it's only at the bottom, so I'm trying to put it in the corner. I gotta try and remember. But because this is wet, I um, and I want it to look old, I stamp off. So I stamp it once, I stamp it twice, and then, make sure this is gonna be right. Yes. Then I'm going to come in this corner here and just stamp. And it's still going to give me an impression, but it's going to be faint. And it looks pretty. You can see how it's darker here, a little bit, and, and you can't really even tell that I used two different colors, just some areas are a little bit deeper. So I use that one. And then for the uh, image down here, I'll give you this one to look at. Um, I do want it a little bit darker, so I'm only going to stamp off once, and I'm also going to use the two colors, concentrating a little more on the darker color, which is the Cherry Cobbler. Um, and again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Whatever appeals to you and whatever your eye likes, and I stamp off, and then I come down here. And I want it kind of close to the bottom because I want it pretty visible from the um, Eiffel Tower. And that turned out pretty good. 
and you can see how there is no, it's not difficult. For the crown and for the fleur de lis, I am using crumb cake. And again, I'm going to stamp off. I want the crown pretty faint. I'm going to put it over in the other corner opposite this circle flourish thing, whatever it is. Stamp off. See how dark it is there? I really don't want it that dark, so I'm going to probably stamp off again and then come over here in the corner. And it's very faint. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and then I'm going to use the Florida Lee from Cart Postal. I love this set, and I one of the things I think it's perfect for the collage. Um, it already has a built-in distressed look, so there are little areas that are recessed, so it's going to not pick color, so it's not going to be a solid color. It's already going to look as if it's aged without you doing anything. So um, I thought this kind of looked gold after stamped off and added to the little look of antiquity. So just any which way you want, what makes you happy, you put it on there, and it's still quite subtle. I'm leaving this area blank for the bonjour, and I am using stays on for that. And again, on some of these, it is perfectly lined up with the edge, and on others, it's not, and it really doesn't matter. Everything is skewed for the most part, and um, I do try to line it up just because I want it. But it doesn't matter. Some of them are and some of them aren't. And I do want this dark, and I thought about doing embossing, but I didn't want to lose any of those really sketchy double lines that are there. And I think using embossing powder, you would lose some of it. It would get pretty thick. So I went with the Stays On Jet Black. And then the Eiffel Tower, I use Versamark. And make that up. And I'm going to line it up on here. I want to try and keep it pretty centered with that um, detail at the bottom still visible. And pretty good. And then I'm going to use black embossing powder. And I blow it off so the excess doesn't um, take away from the detail. And using a heat gun, I am, gosh, wait, <laughs> should probably move this so it doesn't melt in the process. I will use my heat gun and watch it turn. It doesn't take very long once it heats up. For all that really fun detail to show up. I always pick it up and kind of angle it against the light to make sure I have it all. And that looks pretty good. So that, that is it. Every one of the cards uses this exact same detail. On um, layer one, you can see I just added the ribbon and then I layered it on black cardstock. And then on the, I think this is cherry cobbler. I don't think I use Riding Hood Red. Layered it there. And I did use dimensionals to pop it up over the ribbon, but that's one. Very easy, and we did that very quickly. Level two, the thing that I did differently was I um, just added a strip, did the exact same thing I did for one, I have this, but I added a strip of, oh, I had it around here, a strip of this musical note paper. And of course, I can't find it now. But anyway, you just add a little strip, and I'll put the dimensions on the video as well. Stayed with the same ribbon just like I did in one. You can see there's very little variation. And see that one's crooked and it doesn't matter. And I didn't even have the crown there. So that's two. And then for three, this is the one I really want to show you. Um, it's very similar in that I have the card stock's the same, the mat is the same. Except this time I took strips and I started at the bottom with the musical note paper. 
and I used this um, punch and I just, I always start from the back. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but then I can line the edge up properly. And then I turn it over and I line it up so that I can start continuing with the edge. And um, I won't do them all, but you'll get the idea. You just line it up. In case you haven't used these, these border punches are really fun. And all you do is you line up the punched part. I don't know if you can see the image down there. And that's how you continue with the perfect punch edge there. Perfectly aligned punched edge. I think that's how you would say it. And ta-da! So I did it actually with each of the strips. And once it was finished, I adhered it down, leaving just a bit of border, like I would normally do. And then I overlap it. So the next piece, oh, where are you? The next piece is this one. And so on. So you just keep layering it. And then this one, and if you can tell, I alternated between... Um, black, red, black, red, black, red. And I tried to vary the prints to the intensity with the exception of right here. Those two are pretty dark together. But that's also where I placed the ribbon. And I, when I did place the ribbon, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but I left the edge detail so it almost looked like it was part of the ribbon um, and popped it out. And then I just used my handy mat pack on uh, this part. You know, if you have seen any of these videos, you, you know that I use this mat pack all the time, and I can't find it in this moment. Here it is. So I just um, line it up using the, there's a little line right here, and I line the edge up right there, or you can bring it down this way. It doesn't matter. However it works for you. And then you figure out how you want your spacing. I think on this one, I have three spaces in between. I just kind of figured where I liked the spacing for the first one. Um, and I just used little small brads. Poke the hole, come over here, poke a hole. And I think I skipped two and poked a hole. And so there are my holes for my brads, nicely spaced. I go back in to make the, the hole just a little bit larger. And I have my little brads right here. And these are shiny brads, shiny black brads that kind of match the intensity of the um, embossed image. And so this is really a very simple card. It may look like it's hard, and it really doesn't, doesn't take long. The most time-consuming portion is the punching on this level three, but the um, actual collage image is very easy and very fast. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to show you these again. Here's step one, step two, and step three. And I appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Bye.